we find that the prostate seems to stand in front of the male urethra duct and gland, which is in front of the bladder. And most men have some kind of prostate trouble sometime in their life, usually after 40, some of them before, especially if they're alcoholics or heavy into drugs. The question is, why? And what does this have to do with the separation, supposedly, of the sexes? And what am I still driving at? Stay with me. It's going to get even more interesting. We find now that in some cases of giganticism and dwarfism, the female clitoris resembles very much the male what? Penis. If you've seen some of these pictures of anomalies, we see the picture supposedly of the freaks of Earth, per se. We find again that the glands are so close together, the organs are so close together, that they almost double in their function. We also know, too, that some men have a large foreskin over their phallic symbols, or penises again, that have to be cut back by medical doctors, or as in Africa, amongst the Ndombis again, amongst the Hausa people, some of the even Fulani, it is actually done as a ritual of life by groups of males before the child reaches puberty, which is a very harsh thing, and near birth if possible. I'm suggesting to you that the reason why this foreskin grows so much and the reason why these old Hebrews went through such trouble to give circumcision was because at one time on earth, since the males had a very hard time making it into life as males, as we'll find out, all original zygotes are females and have to change to males or there would be no males on earth, we find that this is simply again the covering like it would be over the clitoris that has produced itself in males itself and especially some time ago it had to constantly be cut back or it would cease to grow and try to cover the penis. It would begin to grow to such an extent that it seemed again like a deformity. It shows again that nature actually fought against man's entrance on earth and his reproduction was almost nil. All he could do would be to find if he was one of the ones that was successful in coming into life, he tried to maintain his own sexuality through a lot of difficulty. A whole rite had to be performed to continue to circumcise those males that were strong enough to make entrance to the earth plane. We also find that the rib cage of man and feman is different. We find again that the rib cage, of course, encases the lungs and that the lungs usually in a male are larger than those of the female. The lungs do just one thing in the main. They exchange oxygen and give up carbon dioxide and carbon, uh, all of the different poisons in the body and allow the body to breathe. By the capacity of the lungs, and the quality of the oxygen being osmosed into the blood, do you have the individual growing either stronger or weaker, more psychic or less psychic? So the lungs have a large part to do with the quality of life and the kind of energy that flows through the male or the female. Since this is a man lecture, we're going to say simply this. The energy that is exchanged from the blood that gives us life, which we call oxygen, at one time was very, very strong. The energy was such that the brain cells actually almost vibrated from the kind of pure oxygen that was on Earth and that was coming into man himself. Then as Earth became more polluted and as the energy fields of Earth began to get less vibrant, the oxygen capacity and the energy in the oxygen also depleted and man lost the power to do a lot of things seemingly that he could do before. The energy simply was not there. The energy was not in the corpuscles of the red blood cells. The energy was not in the oxygen and the oxygen began to be weaker. And therefore man began to be weaker as a consequence. Most men who are from the sons of God, that paraphrase again in the Bible, <clears throat> 